Hi everybody, so my name is Rexa. I play a 120 raid enchanter. So this is my update to my previous video. Just to keep in current now for the Terror of Luckland expansion. Hopefully you read uh, some of my guides on my website. I don't want to rehash too many things. But just know the, that the Enchanter class, at least in the TOL expansion, you're expected to heavily rune, you're expected to ADPS, and you're also going to be expected to Bane. I'm not going to be getting into any raid strats, but we're just going to highlight some simple spellcasting strats and how to burn and all that good stuff. So, um... You know, I'll, I'll just gloss over real quick again. Going into a ra raid setting, I've explained this in my previous video, but try and get like the ADPS AAs that are needed. A lot of AAs are already auto-granted. So we'll just go real quick. If you open your alternate advancement window, click the V key. Um, in here, you want to be concerned with getting... I mean, maybe this is not a DPS, but you want to definitely get your Gift of Mana personal uh, proc AA done. This is a prerequisite for the group Gift of Mana under your class tab. So I would definitely try and get that one if possible. Next under the class tab, we'll just go in order here. Um, you want to get, let's see, you want to get Gift of Hazy Thoughts. You want to get Gracious Gift of Mana. This is your group GOM proc. So when you're casting certain spells, you additionally have a chance to be casting GOMs for your group. It'll save a mana. And some classes are very mana hungry. The more mana you have, the more DPS you can do. Next we have Illusions of Grandeur. This is part of your full burns. Did I miss something? Oh yeah, Chromatic Haze up top here. You gotta get that one too. And uh, Spire of Enchantment, this one should already be auto-maxed out since it's based from the Broken Mirror expansion. Lastly, under your Focus tab, make sure you have Beguiler Synergy maxed. Um, having it maxed out, every time you cast your Mind Reap Nuke, you have a 100% chance to trigger Beguiler Synergy on all group members. A huge bulk of your sustained ADPS will be coming from proccing this ability. Basically what it does is it increases the base damage of one level... I don't know why it says 249, but anyway... It increases the base damage of one fire, ice, or magic spell that does at least 100 damage by 65%. So that's why I say a lot of your bulk sustained ADPS will be coming from just maxing out this focus AA alone. Um, nice to haves on top of all of those, which are the main ones you should really be getting if you don't have a maxed. You should try to get Tashan's Lingering Cry maxed out. I consider this more of a raid wide. ADPS proc. Basically, every time you tash a mob, you automatically will proc this additional debuff. And what it does is it increases the damage that the mob takes from spells by 7 to 17 percent. So that's why I kind of think this one's important too, and why I consider it as part of ADPS. So, uh, again, not much has changed from my previous video. But the main auras you want to keep up 
are your twin cast aura. This is a permanent aura. It takes a very long time for it to expire. It uh, basically grants your group a chance to twin cast any damage spell as long as they're near you. So this is a good one to have. And your other aura is a mana strike aura. For TOL, your current mana strike aura is called mana radix aura. And it adds an additional damage proc to damage spells that they cast. Again, they gotta be near you. So those are auras in a nutshell. Um, the next thing we should talk about are probably buffs. Actually, we'll talk about spell guards rather, to be more specific. Um, so before a raid starts, I mean, before you're you're gonna be buffing the usual um, clarity and haste buffs. You're gonna be also be buffing your raid with three spell guards, and I pulled them all up here. The first one is Legion of Liaco. Uh, this absorbs twenty percent of incoming direct spell damage. I know it is not spelled out here, but this is a direct spell damage spell guard. The next one is Legion of Zetheg. This one absorbs 20% of incoming damage over time damage. And lastly, Divisor's Auspice. This is a spell we've spoken about in the previous video as well. Um, let me just pull it up real quick. This is from the Claws of Ishan expansion. It is still a current spell guard and melee strike rune to use. I won't get into the too many specifics of what it says here, but just know and understand that it absorbs 25% of incoming damage over time spell damage. So you can buff these three uh, guards up on the raid. But if you're going to have to repeat any one of these... Just know and understand that even though Legion of Zethag is one of the current DOT spell guards that were given to us this expansion, that Divisor's Auspice will actually still absorb more spell damage. It's very weird on AE DOT spells, but um, just kind of keep that in mind. Like, I'll pre-buff the raid with Legion of Zethag, but if... I you know, I'm in an event where there's periodic damage over time spells being cast. Um, I will probably TB or mass Divisor's Auspice still. So it's weird how they have this, but that's just the way it goes. I prefer to also use this too in conjunction with the fact that um, it's also a melee strike rune as well. But the main takeaway is that Divisor's Auspice is still a better DOT spell guard rune than Legion of Zetheg. If you had to only cast one of these spell guards. So uh, we'll also go over... Um, let's go over spell rotations, I guess. So the more spells you cast, the more ADPS you're giving your group. Um, ADPS means you're adding damage to spells that are being cast. You're going to most likely be grouped in a, uh, in a caster group, which should comprise of hopefully a druid, another, and then other intelligence casters besides yourself. So I have a hot bar here. You're going to notice there's uh, two sets of spells. 
the main one that I'm currently using for this expansion is Composite Reinforcement, Mind Reap, Thralling Grip, and then Thralling Grip again. So this is a little bit of a change from the previous expansion. Um, in my guide, I actually updated it that too. Enchanters don't really cast Alliance a lot in the, the current TOL expansion. Thanks to... Um, let me just pull it up here. Due to the increasing ranks of Enhanced Torment that we received, we actually do far more damage. If there's three enchanters, let's say two to three, we do far more damage just using our personal uh, double grip rotation. So you're not going to really be seeing enchanters doing alliance this mu uh, that much this expansion. If you do see enchanters doing alliance, um, hopefully they have at least four to rapidly fire it off. Otherwise, you're going to be faced with a lot of failed alliances. So, considering we we typically have been running with, with three enchanters, there really has been no reason for us to bother with alliances. This will possibly change in the next expansion, because usually every other expansion we get an alliance upgrade. But right now, we have just done away with alliances altogether. So, um, the, I guess my backup rotation is Composite Reinforcement, Mind Reap, Mind Rift, and Throttling Grip. Um, the key takeaway with this is your Double Grip rotation, this is a very mana intensive rotation. So if you're a new enchanter starting out and just wearing group gear, you might have a hard time keeping up with this. You may want to start off with Composite Reinforcement, Mind Reap, Mind Rift, and Thralling Grip instead for a spell rotation, especially in like long duration um, EXP groups or, or mission runs. Um, I'm running with over a 350k mana pool, so I don't struggle with mana. I have mana preservation items. I just have no reason to use anything else except really this preferred rotation of composite reinforcement, mind reap, grip, and then grip again. If you do happen to do Enchanter Alliances, that's where the double nuke one will probably fare better. But not many raids, not many guilds really run with four or more enchanters in TOL, so you just be concerned, I guess, you know, in a raid setting with the double grip rotation. So I use a multi-bind key to, to fire my rotation off. I'm going to just show it to you right now. So I have these four spell gems with the double grip. I have them bound to the K key on my keyboard. And I'm just going to be mashing my K key right now. And I'm, again, just simply pressing my K key over and over and over. And it's casting everything in the, the order I pretty much have it. On these four uh, spell gems. So this is called a multi-bind key. You want to really bind your multi-bind key to a hotbar. I used to do it to my spell gems, but that became a problem because sometimes I swap my spell gems on here. So it's much better to bind a multi-bind key to a hotbar. If you hit Alt-O, you can set this up by going to your options and then go to keys. 
And then under select category, you can select, I'm using hotbar, what am I using? Hotbar 1, 10, I think. I'm using hotbar 10 on this, I'm sorry, but you can use whatever hotbar you, you want. But for my demonstration here, I'm using hotbar 10. So my K key is assigned to hot buttons 8 through 11 in this example, which you're going to see here. 8, 9, 10, 11. And I have my backup rotation set up to my J key. These are hot buttons 2 through 5. So that's how I can have actually two multi binds onto one hotbar. It comes in handy rather than me putting them on, on separate hotbars. I prefer to just have a dedicated hotbar with, uh, with two spell rotations on it. So that's how you multi bind. Um, I should mention one more thing since we're on the topic of multi binding and spell rotations. So again, the more spells you're casting, the more ADPS you're proccing for your caster group. If you're individually clicking gems, it's going to be a lot slower. So that's what I want you to just uh, keep in mind here. You'll notice that as per my uh, written guide on my website, I'm giving priority always to composite reinforcement. You want to have this on cooldown and have this as the first spell you cast because it's also one of the longer spells that take to refresh. I believe it takes approximately one minute or more to refresh. The next priority you're giving to is your Mind Reap spell. And this is the spell that will always 100% proc Beguiler Synergy for your group. So again, this is where a bulk of your, your ADPS will be coming from. You want to always just keep these two spells on cooldown. I'm just going to mash it again. Additionally, Mind Reap and your two fast casting back-to-back -back grips will be proccing Gift of Hazy Thoughts on your group, as well as, as, well as Gift of Manas. So I like this, uh, this rotation a lot. You can see how fast the, the Thralling grips are casting. So next let's talk about uh let's talk about burns. I have an entire hot bar dedicated just to burning alone. And these are considered let's consider them full burns. This is what you want to run um when a druid is doing group wolf, when a ranger is hitting their auspice, their MG being it for a raid. You kind of want to make sure you're in sync with everybody. And my burns are, are set in the order that they pretty much get casted in. I will jump around first just so you understand what's on here. I have two, I only use two social keys for my burns. The first one, which I guess just says burns with three Z's in it. On here I am on here I'm activating Illusions of Grandeur, Improved Twin Cast, Calculated Insanity, and Focus Arcanum. I'm I'm activating all four of those abilities at the same time. I'm also announcing to the group that Illusions of Grandeur is up. A second social key I have is my Chromatic Haze key. It, all it does is activate Chromatic Haze and also tell the group at the same time that Chromatic Haze is up. So those are the two social keys you really want to work on making. But now let me just go line by, um, rather button by button as to what's on this hotbar here. So I have Forceful Reju Rejuvenation as the first ability. If I'm burning, if I'm not burning at the start 
or let's say I, I have to hold burns or whatnot, I'll hit Forceful Rejuvenation just to simply refresh Composite Reinforcement. So that's the only reason I use Forceful Rejuvenation, really. When you're burning at the start, Composite Reinforcement will already be up, so there's no sense in really using Forceful Rejuvenation. But, um, if again, if you're burning at some point midway through an event, hit Forceful Rejuvenation if Composite Reinforcement is down just to bring it back up. So I'll click that right before a burn. Next, I'm going to click my Burn Social Key. So this is going to click, um, this is going to take care of IOG, Improved Twin Cast, Calculating Insanity, and Focus Arcanum all in one shot. The reason I have the individual A buttons also up is that, you know, if it's re lagging really bad, sometimes not all the abilities may get activated. It's happened a few times. Plus, I get to keep track of the individual timers on these abilities since they're uh, they're different. Like for, like Illusions of Grandeur has like a twelve minute refresh time. Improved Twin Cast is like fifteen minutes, so that's why I additionally just keep the individual AAs up, just to kind of keep track of them. So after I click my Burns key. I'm going to then cast Mind Reap. This accomplishes two things. First, it's going to apply Beguiler Synergy for the group. And second, it gives me a gap between IOG and when I actually hit Chromatic Haze. And this is very, very important. I've gone over this in my ADPS guide in my Enchanter section. Um, your group members are going to be doing other things in between to prepare their largest damage spells for Chromatic Haze. Especially your Druid. Your Druid needs to land a certain spell called Nature's Sweltering Wrath before you hit Chromatic Haze. And this is very important. Um, sometimes your Druid may even make a social key to tell you when to hit Chromatic Haze. If you're too quick on Chromatic Haze, they may potentially miss out on a max hit of 35 million damage. So that's very important. Just keep that in mind. You don't want to be too quick on Chromatic Haze, but you don't want to be like 10 seconds delayed on it either from when IOG hits. So again, Mind Reap, then Chromatic Haze. Then you're going to click your Robe Click. This is primarily for your personal damage. And then you're going to hit Thralling Grip so you can take advantage of your Chromatic Haze ability. Keep in mind that Thralling Grip is your most powerful spell in this expansion. It has a built-in nuke component and a damage over time component. And that new component is going to take advantage of the Chromatic Haze buff. After you do that, you're then going to be applying your strongest dot, which is your Mind Vortex dot. And then you're going to go straight into your spell rotation. So I'm going to just show you how this works. Just make sure you have all your auras up and whatnot. Let's pretend you're, I don't know, you're burning probably midway through an event. Let's pretend from, uh, Composite Reinforcement is down. You're going to hit Forceful Rejuvenation to bring it back up. You got Druid Group Wolf and other good things running. You're running your full burns. You are hitting your Mind Reef spell. Hopefully your Druid has done Nature's Sweltering Wrath or they're asking you for Chromatic Haze. So you're then going to hit Chromatic Haze. Chromatic you're going to click your robe. Then you're going to do your personal DPS thing with Throttling Grip. And then you're going to hit 
Mind Vortex. And then immediately just start mashing your multi buying key and get into your sustained a DPS rotation. So this is how you really accomplish a full burn. IOG will be running for two minutes from when you start it. And yeah, that's how you full burn. I'm gonna just put I'm gonna put these hot bars back. So after IOG wears up, I'm just gonna click IOG off right now just so you can kind of see my triggers going. After IOG is off, you wanna do Spire of Enchantment. And I have a, a button that also announces it for the group in case other people want to run their spires together with it. And just to quickly go over that, um, the Druid wolf, Group Wolf is probably still going to be running on the group. But that lasts about four and a half minutes, while your IOG only lasts two minutes. So you're using your Spire as a filler for ADPS. And it'll, it'll at least stay a while. I mean, it's like it lasts a minute and 30 seconds. Um, but I, it'll at least remain for most of the, the duration of uh, Group Wolf being on you. But in general, with Spire, you want to cast it after IOG is off, and then always just keep casting it on refresh. This way you're always using it. So with, uh, with Illusions of Grandeur, just so you know, Illusions of Grandeur affects, uh, it affects both damage over time and direct and direct damage spells. Whereas Spire of, en of Enchantment is only going to be affecting... Yeah, it's only going to be affecting direct damage spells. However, the additional bonus with Spire of an Enchantment is that it also increases mana region on the group. So it's better to have it... It's better to use it than not use it. That's the, the moral of this story. So this is a crash course in, uh, in playing an enchanter in TOL, at least in a raid setting. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Take care, y'all.